Welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. It's a little chilly out. Uh, it was minus 32 degrees this morning Celsius, so about minus 25. Uh, so we're going to head out and uh, see how the animals are doing. We fed them earlier this morning, but it's just too tough to film in the colder temperatures. It's about minus 25 Celsius now, uh, so it's a little bit more bearable. I have my um, Sambot heated gloves that I got just before Christmas. And of course, my, uh, my parka and my uh, snow pants. So uh, nice and toasty. Uh, one thing I wanted to kind of talk about here was our shelter. If you've been watching uh, uh, our videos uh, this past summer, uh, we made a shelter here out of, um, actually out of racking that we picked up from a store. Uh, so we uh, welded the, uh, the pieces together and used the braces and it worked out really well. Uh, so it is, um, it's a nice shelter for uh, housing all of, uh, you know, wood uh, for projects. Uh, and of course, I've got the car in here. And we've got our, uh, our two tractors. I picked up a, uh, a solar light here. It has a uh, solar panel on the outside because we don't have any power out in this area. And then, of course, our snowblower, which uh, Tara has been quite enjoying. Uh, so, <laughs> so that's what's in here. Um, everything seems to be um, like it's holding, uh, it's, it's, it's very rigid, it's holding the snow on here without uh, any problem. Uh, and then of course our other, um, uh, we've got uh, a couple greenhouses over here, we built out the uh, same material. Uh, now also, we had, uh, we had so much of that stuff, we built a, uh, a duck rabbit goose enclosure. Uh, and it's, uh, we've covered it with poly and it's actually done really well. And uh, it's quite a bit warmer in there, even though it's just poly, there's snow that's on the top. So we're gonna go out there and check on the geese and ducks and rabbits uh, and uh, just get an idea as to what we do in the cold winter months uh, and some of the challenges we run into. I'll leave the inside barn, which is in here till the last because what happens is the camera fogs up and frosts up. Uh, so I've learned that if I'm doing any filming, uh, I want to stay in the cold so that we don't get uh, all frosted up. All right, so this brings us to the front here with, uh, hey, Billy. <laughs> Billy loves his little house. <laughs> uh, you can tell by all the damage he does to it. <laughs> That's how he shows affection, I guess. <laughs> uh, Daisy, the pony is probably in there as well. Uh, that's kind of where they hang out. Uh, Levi and Meadow here, uh, they have, you can see how fluffy they are. They grow their, their coat uh, during the fall as it starts to get colder. Uh, all of the animals do. And, um, and they're, they're well insulated. So they do have their shelter over here that they can get out of the wind. Um, and, and Carl over there uses the shelter quite a bit as well. Uh, these waters, these um, little spring waters have worked great, even down to the, you know, minus 30s in temperature. Uh, it has a heater inside here. Uh, and um, I've discussed this before. We used to use these big containers, but we were using so much energy uh, warming and keeping it from freezing. Uh, this, we fill up twice a day manually. We will likely uh, change it out and plummet this summer. Uh, so that's uh, another change uh, that we're going to be making. And water can be uh, quite a challenge during the winter months, uh, especially at those temperatures, as you can imagine. Uh, so we fill up our water here. We have our water station and our spigot that comes out of the barn. Uh, and uh, this is where we store our hay. And of course, we uh, it was a couple hours ago we fed them, so that's, uh, that's why everybody's eating. Uh, and uh, in eating, that's another way that they, uh, they kind of keep warm too, the actual chewing. Hey, Billy! <laughs> All right, so coming into, this is the structure well, this building here, we actually built on years ago. It was two separate buildings, uh, and then we combined them together with this roof line uh, so that we could enclose them for the winter months. And we get into here. Hey, Glenn. 
Gwen and Gwen the geese, Canadian geese. All right, so this is it. Uh, so this you can see. Oh, it's so loud. Uh, so in here we have, uh, of course, all the sparrows that uh, that hang out here in the winter time. Uh, <laughs> And then you can see the shelter uh, that we've done. It's basically the same type of shelter as the car shelter. It has the, uh, the side on it. It's actually got two sides on it. And those are the rabbit runs. Now I've discussed in the past about, you know, water issues in here. Uh, this is the rabbit water that we've got in here. But when it gets cold, it just, it freezes. Um, so what we've done is we've taken snow and we put snow in here rabbits love to eat their snow they've got it there um, and uh, they can get water when they need it uh, we do give them some water in here uh, but since we put the snow in they don't really use the, uh, the water that much now last year of course we only had this area here and then the rabbits had a run actually the boys didn't even have a run it was the girls um, and what had happened there you can see some of them huddled around the snow there <laughs> um, of course there was no roof on it so the snow would pile in here and that's what they'd go and eat hi daisy there's our other daisy <laughs> hey so uh, so they are going through the snow pretty good. We've got another one uh, sitting out here that the ducks are kind of playing with. Uh, and then of course white lightning that's over here. So um, using snow in the winter months uh, definitely uh, helps things out with the freezing factor. You can see it's been, um, well, it's still a little liquid in there. It's been about an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, and uh, so we feed them twice a day for water. You can see the geese over here. Just kind of playing in the water. Actually, that's a Pekin duck, that's Bubba. Uh, and that's one of the things about geese and ducks is they tend to play in the water. So that's why you get this ice mound that happens around it. Uh, the Muscovy ducks aren't quite as bad. Uh, they go and they drink the water and they don't play in it nearly as much. So, you know, if it's kind of a catch-22, you don't want to give them too much water uh, because then they just play in it and make a mess. Hey girl, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, the, uh, the Muscovies and the uh, Roosters, because you've got a bunch, you can hear them over there in the background. This is where our, um, our boys are. Our, uh, our band of bros, we like to call them, all the roosters. Uh, the hens are inside. Uh, so at night, you'll see them all kind of up in here. <laughs> uh, so, oh, sorry, did I? Yeah, I'm just coming by you here. <laughs> uh, so in the shelter here, they've got all their hay, and they've got their little uh, burrow areas here that they can get into and burrow underneath. Uh, these are, um, uh, we've taken apart a kennel, and then put each side and flipped it upside down uh, so that they have a little section to get away from in there. So they've got a couple of those. Uh, and then they can just, they, usually you find them underneath this here. Uh, they just kind of hang out underneath there. And the girls on the other side, uh, there's a couple more Muscovy girls. <laughs> what are you girls doing? Is this where you hang out? Uh, the girls over on this side are the same. Uh, they've got their feed here. They've got um, all their hay, which you can see uh, daisies over there eating. Uh, and then they've got their little tunnels that they can get into. And then, of course, we have all the pigeons. Uh, and I'm just looking. Let's see. I zoom in here. <laughs> we actually have a young <laughs> underneath that white one on the left. Uh, so even in the dead of winter, uh, with these temperatures, these pigeons still feel the need to, uh, to hatch out young. So in that duck and rabbit shelter, uh, it's significantly warmer than it is. Uh, you can actually see my breath uh, out here. I'm in the animal shelter, just a shelter for our, uh, our mammals. Um, but we noticed it last night when we were out and it was, it was very cold. Um, when we were walking out to that structure to do the feeding, we could feel our face kind of, you know, the tingling, the burning sensation. Uh, but when we were in that shelter, um, 
there was no sensation. So, and of course, when we went back out <laughs> again. So, even though it's just got plastic on it and some snow, uh, the birds generate enough heat that it uh, it stays fairly warm in there. We'll say for fairly warm, you know, minus minus 10, minus 8 kind of thing. <laughs> uh, so I am now out in our shelter, our mammal shelter, uh, off the barn. Uh, and this is where our sheep, alpaca, uh, pigs, <laughs> and, uh, and goats hang out. Uh, and they really haven't gone out that much. Uh, they tend to just stay in here. It looks like, uh, who is that? Is that Jasper? Jasper's going and checking out the outside. Um, Tara's shoveled off a little bit out here, uh, but Jasper's like, uh, that's not here yet. Spring's not here yet, right, Jasper? Yeah, well, uh, Tara's already starting the countdown. You know, we're at the end of January. She's like, oh, five weeks left until the beginning of March, uh, and that's when things will start to warm up. Uh, so I did notice uh, a couple weeks ago that there was some prints that kind of came out here. Uh, now you can see there's none. Uh, and it was actually George that wandered out. I checked in on the cameras that we have out here. Uh, and George had wandered out and then wandered back. Uh, I guess just checking on the weather, doing the weather report. Uh, so the pond's over there. and We put up this uh, caution tape and electric fence. Uh, temporary electric fence uh, to keep them off of the pond because uh, we didn't want to have any concerns with the uh, the freezing in the fall and then of course uh, come spring when things start to melt we don't want them wandering onto that so <laughs> you can see uh, here petunia is eating snow <laughs> so they do quite enjoy their snow <laughs> uh, so this is, uh, it's just, this is our uh, electrical pole that runs up, uh, that brings electricity in. And there's an opening at the top there. Uh, I've got some flanges on it for the, the water to not flow in. Uh, but as you can see, there is still some water staining there. So I may have to look at that to make sure we don't get any, uh, any wood rot happening. But uh, some of the snow comes in. So, Turbo, what do you think? <laughs> I know, you guys probably feel the same, same as we do. It's cold. What happened to the grass and the grazing and the beautiful warm, uh, warm days? What do animals think of that, hey? <laughs> do they understand seasons? I guess when they get old enough and, uh, <laughs> and they go through a few seasons, uh, they, uh, they must know that uh, it's, going to, uh, it's going to warm up. And then of course the pigs just uh, burrow in and uh, sleep most of the winter months. <laughs> hey buddy, what do you think? Is it cold? Yeah, it is. <laughs> but you've got your nice fleece on. Yeah, yes you do. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. So we've got uh, our goats all in here hanging out and our little ones in here. <laughs> Hi kids, what are you doing? Yeah, this is your, uh, well, this would be your first winter, I guess. So they don't seem to mind it too, too much. Although they want out. They want out. They remember what happens in the summertime where it's warm and they can run around and play. Sheldon. <laughs> uh, hey, bud, I think you're, you're coming up on four years old, I think, this spring. <laughs> so they've been they've been getting along uh, well. Sheldon uh, Sheldon bumps them out of the way a few times, but uh, but overall <laughs> overall they they get along pretty well. <laughs> uh, so that's the uh, the outside shelter. So we've just built it on to the outside of our barn here. Uh, this is a building that we built on when we had the trailer. It's now just used for storage. Uh, and we just came off there uh, and extended the barn out into uh, an uninsulated shelter. And this is what they need uh, during the winter months. As long as we can get them off of snow uh, and get them some, uh, some hay or straw base, uh, then, um, then that is fine for them. Uh, so they're, they're enjoying their hay over here. Uh, and alpaca, 
Alpaca have one spot that they always go to the bathroom in, uh, and this is it right here. So <laughs> that's why uh, there is a pile of alpaca poop here. And what we'll do with this is in the spring, um, we'll uh, separate this and, and, and pull it off because this makes excellent fertilizer. What do you think? Is that, are you going to use their bathroom? <laughs> uh. All right, so and you can see how fluffy and full they are. Um, and the girls uh, are due in uh, the beginning of April. So uh, we'll have some cute little kid goats uh, running around. What we'll do is it's still fairly cool at night uh, moving into April. Uh, so what we do is we take all the girls and we put them inside the barn. We'll head in there right away um, and put them into their pens. What is it? What are you doing? <laughs> you got hay all over you. What is that? Oh, you want to eat my glove? Hey? Yeah. Yeah, you guys are cute. <laughs> no, no, I need that. It's not, there's no nutritional value in it. <laughs> oh, you two are cute. So here we are inside the barn. And as you can see, I'm fogged up. Uh, so I'm going to hold off a couple minutes here. Uh, let the camera warm up. So my lens is now defrosted, which I knew it would frost up. So it only took a few uh, few minutes uh, near a heat lamp to kind of warm the lens back up and unfrost it. Uh, so inside the building here, uh, this is an insulated building, uh, and we actually don't heat it. We actually cool this building, and it is uh, what is it? It's about two. Looks like it's about one degree Celsius there. So what's that, 30, 33 degrees, 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so uh, the way this works is we have a fan in the back corner there that exhausts air out and it's hooked up to a thermostat set to about one degree Celsius. Uh, and at this end of the building, uh, we have a pipe that comes in and that pipe extends out side and runs along to the outside of the building to pull some fresh air in. No turbo! <laughs> uh, so uh, it draws the uh, draws the cool dry air in for ventilation and now yeah turbo's <laughs> turbo's pawing at the door. Um, now what I've noticed and I noticed this last year uh, but this year it's been worse uh, now, I just had this kind of, this end open so it would be uh, flowing air out, but what had happened was I had frost buildup inside the pipe and was restricting the air movement. Uh, what would happen is when the fan shut off, the warm, humid air got in to that cool environment and started to frost and close up the end of the pipe. So, um, quick little uh, fix here. I had some parts kicking around. I threw on a reducer and I threw on a dryer vent. So what happens is when the fan's on, uh, of course the vent is open and it's blowing air in, uh, and when it shuts off, it closes. So it doesn't allow that human air to get back in there. So that seems to have worked very well. <laughs> so uh, this building here is heated by the animals in it. Uh, and the exhaust fan that uh, is in this end, uh, it's hooked up to a thermostat and just exhausts air outside, just creating some nice cross and ventilation. Uh, we still get some ice buildup in the cold sections here of the building, uh, but it's greatly reduced. A few years ago, we painted, uh, painted this because it was just raw wood. And we figured, well, let's paint it up, uh, maybe put some kind of pattern, you know, some blue sky, uh, some trees, some foliage. <laughs> Uh, and, um, and what that's doing is it's, yes, it is frosting up, but it's got a barrier, a painted and sealed barrier uh, that will um, inhibit moisture from getting into that raw OSB wood. Uh, so you can see down here, uh, we didn't uh, paint these sections. I don't know if we ran out of paint. I can't remember. That was a few years ago. <laughs> Uh, so here's our feed area, and this was actually going to be, I think we had rabbits in here at one point, and then we uh, converted it into this. We do have uh, a little door down here uh, to go to the outside, uh, but we've just never used that now that it is the, uh, the feed room, we'll call it. 
Uh, so we've got uh, all the hens are in here. Um, I don't believe we have any roosters in here. Uh, we had Billy in here for a while. Sometimes if we get some roosters in that we're accustomed to the warmer environment, then we will put them in here and generally we have them running around. Uh, kind of like these boys here. Well, two boys and a girl. <laughs> Uh, what we've done here is we've also brought some snow in for these guys. Uh, and Ritzy seems to quite enjoy uh, the snow. So this morning, or last night, I think it was last night, Tiana came out and said, um, yeah, Ritzy was uh, sitting in the bowl waiting for some more snow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so these roosters that are in here, Henry and Pluto, um, they're kind of our, I don't know, our, our, our mascot roosters for inside the barn, I guess we can call it. Oh, you too, Fernando. We'll get to you. <laughs> he says, don't forget about me. Uh, so this is where they hang out and they can jump in and out of here. Uh, and then, of course, guinea fowl along with the hens are in here. We did a video on the whole feeding process. Uh, so that was in last week's video. So you'll see that uh, pop up at the end of this video. Um, you can always go back and check uh, on our main page all of the videos. I've put them into playlists for all the years. Um, so I did go over the feeding of all these guys, um, of all these guys uh, last week. All right, so Fernando. Fernando's in here. Uh, Fernando, we have had out just kind of in the general area but his poops are huge. He makes a mess uh, because you can see this is concrete floor. It, it is, you know, it's got, it got a little mess to it, but he just makes these huge splats. The other thing is, um, Fernando can sometimes be moody. <laughs> um, so if he's out and if he's not getting fed right away, then he will go and, and he will bite or peck at, at the girl's feet and sometimes even jump up. So, yeah, Fernando has a dark side. <laughs> he's all pleasant when there's uh, new people around and he's all nice, uh, but it seems to be the hand that feeds him. He tends to, uh, <laughs> he tends to misbehave. Right, buddy? <laughs> so he's in here. When it warms up, we will get him uh, back outside as well. And uh, he'll be able to uh, see his fans once again. Uh, they were all going just a minute ago, so I thought I'd wait to hit that record button again. Guinea fowl are very loud. Uh, they, you know, people ask maybe why do we keep them? Uh, they are great for tick control in the yard. Uh, excellent. They, they'll, we haven't had ticks here on our farm for years. So yes, they are annoying. They're kind of weird looking. Um, they kind of grow on you. <laughs> They're not as weird now that we've had them for quite a while as they were when they first came in. Um, but yeah, Guinea can be very loud. It's actually very quiet in here now, so we'll continue. So come spring, uh, or come within the next uh, six weeks, I guess, um, getting closer into, uh, into mid-March, uh, we will bring our mamas in here, our goats, uh, so that they can have their, uh, their kids. Uh, we want to make sure that they're in a nicer, warmer environment, of course, than, than outside because it can still be quite cold outside. Uh, so we'll put down some fresh hay in here. We'll clean things up. Uh, we do have cameras uh, for all pens so we can keep an eye on everything. Um, Tara will have the feed running on her computer um, pretty much regularly on her second screen. Uh, and then we'll also clear this out here. We'll kick these guys out. Uh, we will probably put these guys outside, possibly. Um, we'll see how, uh, how these ones do. Or they can just hang out here uh, in the barn, which is something that they normally do. Back in the house and the girls are uh, working on another project. And this is... Well, it's kind of some dog hair <laughs> all the way from florida yeah, so this is from i believe it's st petersburg florida uh we received some uh great pyrenees hair yeah. to try out so tara's uh, so carding it tara's carding it and she's got it's uh she's putting in uh putting in some hours on it anyway well uh, i kind of stopped everything else just to get this done because 
get her back her, she wanted it spun. I think she just wants it spun and then I'll send it back to her. And, uh, well, Tiana's gonna do the spinning, obviously. I yeah. Think. Um, so, <laughs> it was funny, because the two little baggies, she's been saving it for probably, I think she said a year and a half. So she's, every time she brushes her Pyrenees, She'd wash it <laughs> and keep it. And then, so she sent it here, vacuum sealed. And those two little bags have turned into thus so far. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so it's, uh, the um, fibers are a little thinner than, of course, A lot sheet. more difficult to, sp to spin with, and uh, it's very staticky. So I've been spraying it down my brush with thieves which just take a little bit of the static out of it. It's also a cleaner and, and smells good. It smells like cinnamon. Um, <laughs> it's, it's essential oils. And then Tiana's spinning. So then it goes from here and then I take a thing and I... You take a thing? You take a... Lay it in her area. What is it called? A, a, she, a bat? A, a bat? Yeah, I guess a bat. Yeah. And then uh, Tiana spins. It's making it get a lot of spin. So like yeah, you can see it twisting a lot, a lot there. Yeah. My hand is cramping a lot because <laughs> it's so fine you have to that hold I have it to. Tighter, eh? Yes, and I have to do more with my fingers. I'm trying to loosen the spin so that I can. There. If I get too much spin in a spot, it won't want to go on. So we're trying this out with this hair. Uh, so don't uh, send us a bunch yeah. of more hair. No, we don't need a whole bunch of dog hair. This is just, we just want to try it out. We're just testing it, it out. Um, yeah. We'll look at, you know, depending on, on how things move uh, so one of forward. Our, yeah, one of our viewers from Florida. Yeah. The, uh, she sent it and said, uh, I don't need my glasses. Um, so it's Rita from St. Petersburg, Florida. Hello, Tiana and Tara. I'm so happy that Tiana is up for this dog hair to yarn challenge. And I can't wait to see what you can create of, out of that fluff. There we go. We'll yeah. see. So that's that. That's, uh, that's yeah. this it's week's project. Me, well, I've been carding, uh, I figured, three hours, three and a half hours carding so far. And then uh, we'll see what how long it takes Tiana. So. Yeah. So there we go. Hard Prep. at work. <laughs> All right, well, that is it for this video. Um, you saw a little bit about uh, how we house our animals during the winter months, which is the more challenging time. Uh, we don't get a lot done outside because it is cold and everything's covered in snow. Uh, during the summer months, of course, we have all kinds of projects that we move forward with. One of them was building the, uh, the shelters for the duck and geese and rabbits uh, this past summer. Uh, so if you have uh, any questions, please put them down in the comment section uh, and we will see you in the next video. Take care, stay warm, stay safe, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.